Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is another fun Excel exercise. And I'll just describe the problem, and we're going to solve it. And of course, if you have an alternate solution, I'm more than willing to receive it. Please be more than willing to also share it. Okay, so what I have here is a list of donors. Yeah, you can see I'm in love with the MVPs. You can see a couple of names, and yeah, they're duplicates, right? And what you want to have here returned is just you know, a list of the names that occur the most, okay? It could be one name, it could be multiple names. So, of course, you're trying to build a solution that is dynamic. So, if Faraz and Bill appear five times, you know, and that's the highest frequency you have, you want both names to show up, okay? So, um, just thinking about it, I know that, of course, I'm going to use the unique function in some sense and maybe the filter function. The order in which I use them, you know, may not really matter, but I'll try and solve it, you know, in both directions, unique to filter, filter to unique in some way. And um, let's, let, let's just get into it. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing I want to know is, okay, fine, I have a long list. I want to know, you know, what names are really there? What are the distinct names there? So I'll do unique or unique names. Unique and distinct could mean two different things, right? So let's not get into that. Okay, so <laughs> so these are the unique, you know, um, names from that long list. The next thing you want to know is how many times do these names actually occur, right? If I were building this, you know, with helper columns, I'll do that in the next column. But now I'm trying to build, you know, a mega formula, if you may. So I'm going to do count if, right? And um, count if I'm going to select, you know, this my range, right? Okay, I don't necessarily need to lock this, but that's okay. And then... I just, um, you know, do enter. So this tells me, okay, fine. For those names, which you should virtually store in your mind, you know, these are their frequencies, right? So some occur five times, some occur four, three, and three. We can see that the highest is five. But we can't hard code and say, oh, five. What we need to know is, okay, fine, what's the maximum? So we now want to see how many of these frequencies are equal to the maximum frequency you have there, right? So what we just do is we just do a test. Copy this because I know I'm going to use that expression and I'm testing if it's equal to max of that same thing, right? So what you're just testing here is for all those frequencies, are they equal to, you know, the highest frequency you have in there? So whichever ones are true are the names, of course, you're interested in. The ones that are false, you're not interested, right? So now, what you can now do is this. You already have true and false. Don't forget how you started this off. You started off, you know, using the unique function. So the first thing you need to do now is bring in the filter, but you're not filtering the entire list. You're filtering on that same list you started off with, right? Because that's the list that corresponds to these booleans. So what you're going to do is you're going to do filter, and then you're just going to bring in that unique expression in there, okay? So you're saying filter. Let me just type it in. <laughs> Sometimes I like to just, you know, unique, and then select the same range, okay? Now, after you do the filter, the next thing is you always want to put oh um, the criteria that returns a true or a false. But this criteria here already gives you your true and your false, right? This already tells you which are true and which ones are false. So you don't need to do any other thing. You just need to close the bracket on the filter, you know, and you have, you know, a list of names that occur the most. Um, you could also decide to sort it and you just put a sort, you know, to the end of that, you know, and then... Um, Close the bracket, and this is a sorted list. So if Bill changes, for example, to let me say Mind uh, Tracy, uh, you know, he, he falls out of the list because um, he's not occurring, I think, five times anymore. You could put, you know, a count here just to see what's going on. So select the entire range. Yeah, you make it absolute, and then you could take advantage of the spilled range, you know, hash. Right. Okay. So and this works. So here you can see I started from, you know, unique and then brought in the filter. Now let's kind of start, you know, in the reverse. We'll start with the filter and bring in unique. Kind of similar logic. The first thing I want to do is, okay, for all these names, I may want to see, you know, a count of, um, you know, each of those names. How many times do they occur? But now, line by line, I'm not dealing with a unique list. I'm dealing with the same list. So I'm just checking count in this range, how many times those same names occur. So essentially, it's going to give a frequency per row. Okay, so Faraz occurs five times. The next time you see Faraz, you'll still see five, you know, and it goes all the way, you know, that way. Now, the next thing is still the same. You want to do the same test. You want to check what's the maximum frequency in that list and compare each of these names, the accounts here, you know, to that maximum. So you're doing max, that same count. You're checking, 
Okay, so anyone that shows true, obviously, is a name that occurs the most because it has the same frequency as the highest occurring frequency. So once you have this, this already gives you your true false, right? So now in this case, we haven't used unique at all. We can feed this into the filter function. Okay, so it means that here we are filtering, you know, on the names. We are filtering on these names, right? And the frequencies here and the booleans that we've gotten from those frequencies will just form our include criteria because we just need true or false. So by filtering on the names, you can see to the right of them, you know, which ones are true, which ones are false, okay? And then, you know, just do this. So essentially, this gives us, you know, um, all the names that should appear. The only thing is that we now have duplicates. So what do we do? We just put a unique function around it, okay? So in this case, I put unique, right? And then I end that. And I have the same list, just that um, I want to include what sort. Okay, so a quite, you know, a number of um, dynamic array functions there. So sort, unique, and filter. The combination is lovely, and you know, you can get you can get it to look this way. Okay, so and if you kind of want to just shorten it, I mean, this is just really for visual appeal. You know, you could bring in the let function. So I could take, for example, this count if for this one. I could take this entire count if and you know make it a variable. So what I'm gonna do here is I would say let and I just call that variable. Well, in this case, I just call it x. And this is the expression, right? So what it means is yes, x now represents this count if. So anywhere I see that whole count if expression in my formula, I just need to call it x. So instead of writing all of this, I can call this x. Of course, you want to use a maybe a more readable name, right? Don't be like me. Uh, so then you do x here, okay? But you need one more bracket, yeah. And then, so we have the same list, and still works, you know, just fine. So whether unique plus filter or filter plus unique kind of works the same way. So this is what it will look like in Power Query. So select any cell within the range. You can do Alt A P T. And do OK. So it's going to create a table and then open the Power Query Editor. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a group by, which will then give me a unique list of owners and it can give me a summary count maybe in the next column. So I'll do group by. All right, list of donors, new column name. I can call the new column name maybe frequency, FARQ. So it's going to do a count. Yes, and I do OK. So essentially, I have my list of donors and I have you know, my frequency. So I would, in this case, just filter. Let's say I was filtering by 5, which is the maximum. But you know that this is hard coding, right? This will not be dynamic. It means if I have a new data set that has a different uh, maximum frequency from 5, this wouldn't work. So what you do is just change this 5 here. You can use a list.max. Okay, so I say list.max. Okay. This stage, the table this draws, and then just put a frequency in there. I think that should be fine. Let's check this. Okay, that's good. Last thing you may want to do is yeah, you may want to sort this, you know, just so that you have it like you have in Excel. And I could delete this column if I don't want the frequencies to show. So I do delete, and this should be fine. So I do close and go to. Uh, let me just select. Maybe this range here it has a header right okay so i do okay okay good and that's what it looks like so let me change this minor tracy back to view gelling and then let's just do a refresh <laughs> all right so that's how you do it with power query so this video was just to show you well formula approach to getting uh, the names that occur the most or the text that occurs the most in, you know, a range. Um, but I just decided to spice it up with Power Query. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification icon so that you get notified when I drop some very interesting content like this. Okay, so for now, I'm out.